Team of Talk is a BS-free zone with smart, funny and educational conversations with entrepreneurs and business owners sharing their stories and insights designed to help you succeed. The result is a video vault of wisdom, strategies and tactics on how to grow your business by increasing revenue, reducing costs and amplifying your market share. Welcome to Team of Talk, the B2B show created to help entrepreneurs and CEOs succeed. Here is your host, business growth architect and founder of Tima, Carl M. Gibbons. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Tima Talk, another edition and 30 minutes of business banter and badinage. Now, what do the following have in common? County Durham in England, uh, Guildford in Surrey, London, Spain, and Luxor, Egypt. Uh, well, that's our guest today. Uh, Lee Allen is a business resilience specialist and financier who is based in the UK, originally from uh, County Durham, which for those of you that don't know, that's the bit that's up there. Completely foreign country, right? Foreign country, right? Um, works and operates his business out of London and lives uh, in, 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 in Guildford in Surrey, which is uh, uh, south of London. Spends a lot of his time in Spain, which is where he's coming uh, to us from today. Uh, but he has an amazing business in Luxor, Egypt. Now, you and I have enough problems running businesses like the here, the now, the touching it. What do you do when they're like, global in essence when they're miles apart before we get into your entrepreneurial journey lee why don't we just pause for a moment and take a look at the majesty of the princess donya combined with the magic and mystery of the nile which will give our viewers a little bit of context and help understand the journey and the story that you're about to tell Welcome to Team of Talk. Thank you. Yeah. And through, through, through the magic of the internet, you're, you're in Spain, right, at the moment? I am in Spain, yes. All right, good stuff. Well, I'm down here in Naples, Florida, Spain, so we're going to go all over the world. So yes. in 2006, you bought a sailing ship, uh, and the, the, the Egyptian, the technical term for it is Diabia. Uh, it's 36 meters in length. That's 120 foot for uh, you know for those of us that are still in pounds, shillings, and pence, right? And my my first question to you is why? <laughs> well, the first thing I need to do, uh, Carl, is to tell you that the journey started in 2004. Okay. And I actually went out there and gathered 30 men and two engineers, right. and we built the Princess Donya from scratch, from oh, nothing. Right. We laid the keel and we built the 36 meter sailing boat, steel hull and uh, superstructure. And with 30 men, it took us one year. And I lived at the side of the Nile with all the other guys and we worked into the night and we, it took us a year and we built it. So when uh, but what, was, what was the around. what was the driver lee i mean you didn't just wake up one morning and go i know i'm gonna go out to luxor egypt buy myself uh you know a, a steel hull and build myself a boat right yeah. like that. no i think uh, what happened is i had a bit of an epiphany i had a, a health scare that we got over and uh, as a thank you i thought um, I woke up one morning and said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my money. I'm not going to ask anybody else for, to chip in. I'm going to go to Egypt 
and I'm going to build one of these Davavias. Um, really, there was one for sale, and I had a look at it, and I thought by the time I'd got it to where I'd want it to be, it was cheaper to start from scratch. To build a new one with air conditioning, power showers, the alarms, phone systems, everything in, internet. So that's what I did. I, right. you know, we got the right guys together. We set, we laid the keel, and we built it. Then right. we. It's a fa as you know, it's a fabulous world. Right. And, and, and why why Egypt? Why the Nile? Why not the Seine? Why not the Danube? Why not the Thames? <laughs> You're in I your own backyard, a, right? It, it was I was already in the situation of giving something back. Um, when a friend um, suggested to me, um, she's a bit of a hippie, she does triathlons and has a basket a bike with a basket on the front and she throws flowers to the um, to the crowd. So that gives you an idea <laughs> where the idea came from. So, uh, I, I, she said, there's one of these for sale and wouldn't be fabulous to, to buy one of them. Yeah, so we went out and had a look at all of them and they were all okay, but it's, you know, I just thought it would be much, much better to build it from the beginning. And so I, uh, I took a year out and went to Egypt and, and built the boat. Right. I didn't speak Arabic. I learned a bit while I was there. Um, and, uh, you, you know, so it, it was challenging. Well, I still have a book here, a graph book, and I, I did all of the drawings. I did the internal design right. from all of the room sizes, uh, the bathrooms, the way the doors open and everything. Um, and I did that on graph paper with memories of lessons of technical drawing I had with Mr. Hogg when I was about 14, I think. And I carried that with me and that's ruler and things. And I, I designed and the square, the same square, right? That's it. And, uh, and that's what we used to. So when I wanted something done, I really got, drew a f picture of it. And, right. and because I couldn't communicate very well in, in Arabic. Right. And, um, and then, so we just drew pictures and got there in the end. Right. Now, is it, uh, uh, is it fair to say as well that you had no experience at this point of the tourist business, the uh, charter, yacht charter business, you were just... Boat building, anything like that. No, I just thought it's a great idea. Uh, it shouldn't... <laughs> I, didn't, I don't think I said it shouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> I think, I, think I, I, I said to myself, it's got to be possible. And, um, and why not? And, and the only reason that I actually embarked on this whole thing um, is I found the right people. Hassan, the captain, Usam, his brother, and uh, a few others. Um, we, and, and, and we built, if I didn't have Hassan and Usam, I don't think I would have gone ahead. They're still captain and second captain of right. the boat uh, all of these years. And, um, you know, I just wouldn't have done it if I didn't have them. You, you know, you need a few key people. Right. And, and how did you how did you find them? I mean, you know. Um, uh, well, Romy, the hippie um, triathlete, um, used to go to Egypt, and she um, used to go on Hassan's Dahab, not Dahabia, but Faluka. Right. It's a smaller sailing boat. A smaller one, right. And she used to go on that and she remembered. And then it's a sad story in many respects, but with a happy ending. Um, in, in Egypt, the, the, the people who run the Falukas and that, they work during the winter. Our winter is, is when they make the money. And in the summer, they borrow money because there's no work. Right. And unfortunately, Hassan's father died in the summer when they were borrowing money. So he lost the Falunka. Right. So Romy came back and uh, did tea mornings and baked cakes and that. And she raised enough money to go and buy the Falunka back. And, um, and then Hassan now had a business because he had to be in charge of the family and, and, and be responsible for him. So he now had a means of earning money when the winter months come and the tourists were there. So, we looked and we said, and wouldn't it be a fantastic if we could get, you know, you know the old saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Yeah. You know, teach him how to fish, yeah. build a business, yeah. and you feed him for a lifetime. So we yeah. have got seven families 
that we have supported from the very beginning that um, is unbelievable. And the thing is, they work, they run the business, they keep the money. Right. And it's their business. Right. I just bought them the business. Right. And we do the marketing and we get bookings and things like that. But right, we, right. But they run the business and they right. do it very, very well. You know, right. so. And, and I understand that you have a, I'm going to use the term, very unusual succession planning place as far as uh, Captain uh, Hassan and, and, and his brother is concerned. I have, yes. The first part of the succession plan is that um, the, the reason why the board is called Princess Donya is because I have three daughters, Emma, Jenny and Sarah. I also have six grandchildren now. Um, and the, the thing is, I couldn't name the board. Oh, you after you're, one of them. Oh, you're, that's a no-win situation, right? Yeah. You were, so I couldn't name it after one of them. I couldn't name it after all of them. And I certainly wasn't going to build another two. <laughs> one is enough, I can tell you that. <laughs> so what we did, I looked and uh, Hassan's daughter... Um, was a, a, a when I first met her, she was a little kid um, running around in the streets, just uh, hair all over, the, just a little kid. And her name is Donya, and uh, Donya in Arabic means life or world, right? So when uh, Donya was born, Hassan called her uh, Donya, so that it was his world, she was his world. Got it. And it just happened that my logo, you might have noticed when you've seen it, where the life rings are, yes. in the middle is an elongated world. Yeah. And that's always been my logo. So we've got that world. And it just happened to match in. So we right. called it Donya. Now, Donya, I believe, is the first person um, to go to university from her little village. Really? So she's now... Um, in the middle of a, uh, of a university studying languages and guess what? Tourism. Right. right. So she is the next generation. So if you can't hire them, you breed them. Is that what you're saying? That's, that it, that's <laughs> it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's better. <laughs> so what happens is what we were planning for is that, is that we have, um, is Donya will work with Hassan, her father, and Elaine, my partner, so, and Elaine it does massive amounts of work for the business and, um, you know, does all the bookings and things like that. And we send it all over to Hassan. So now we've, we've got the first part of the succession plan is, and the second part is that when, when I die, it doesn't go to my children because they wouldn't know what to do with it. It goes to Hassan and Hassan there would be the complete owners of the business. So um, it's, it's, that's the plan, really. In, in my 40 years in business, I've never heard anything like that ever. I think it's, I, I take my hat off to you, sir. I think it's absolutely amazing. And, and, and to be fair to everybody, full disclosure, I've, I've known Alan for a, a few, uh, 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 sorry, I've known Lee for a few years. And, um, that I only discovered this today, a little earlier on when I was doing some, doing some research. Now, I'm sure if I ask you, Lee, you know, um, give me some of the I never saw that one coming stories. Uh, yeah. For We could be here all day. But yeah. j just give us a few, like, in your wildest dreams, Lee, you're like, I, I, I never expect, I never saw that one coming. Okay. Well, the first one was we needed to uh, get some two inch brass screws. So I went with Hassan to Luxor to the market and, and we looked and Hassan made a few phone calls to say where we could possibly get the um, uh, two inch brass screws. So we find a place and we go in and everybody says salam, 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 and then uh, shaking your hands and then they say shy. So we go, yes. And, and shy is tea. tea. So you have a little cup of tea, and, and I always say, no sugar. And they say, no sugar? 
and it comes with sugar because there's no concept of having anything without sugar. So they all have a cigarette, a drink of tea, and I said, now about these brass screws, and he put six on the table. And I said, right, I'll have four boxes. He said, no, that's the six I have. (laughs) And I said, I'll have them because I thought, it's going to be a long night if we can only put six <laughs> at a time. And it's a lot of tea to drink. So we, that's, how, that's what we did. And then we realised we'd just got to go to Cairo right. to buy stuff because we're right. not going to buy it. Right. So, so that, was, that was one th- sort of like eye-opener. Because yeah. th- there's, there's, no, there's no Best Buy, Home Depot, right? You can't just pop that. No, there's no B&Q. There's no nothing like right. that. There's no... Yeah. Um, so... You, you, you just have to source them where you can. Or go to Cairo, and then there's a there's an area in Cairo that does bathrooms. There's an area area in Cairo that's kitchens and so on like that. Right. And you just have to go from one to the other and just buy what you can eat. Right. And that's 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 what we did. Right. So that was uh, quite interesting. Another one would be that uh, we did have the revolution, and I had to make a decision. Most people either went home, tied the boats to the side left them in the sun and to ruin. And I made a decision that this wouldn't last forever. And that what we're going to do is we're going to invest even more money, my money, and take it out of the water, clean the bottom, paint it, redesign, refurbish, renew. And it was a new pin. And then business came back. And who was the only boat that was clean, tidy, well painted, and licensed? Princess Donya. Right. So we did. It was a good decision, but we kind of like it in in uh, the people who dive off in Acapulco. Yeah. They're having to dive when they see rocks in order for them to be water, water. there when they get there. Right. right. So I had to make a decision. Do do some people said. Ah, that's it. I'm not throwing any more money in. But I had to put money in to say, well, yes, we've got to do it because we've got to be ready when the time comes. And the time did come and we were ready. So, yeah, that's something that happened. Right. How about the the challenges of the last six months, the the COVID-9 pandemic? Because it's affected everybody, right? This is is a global issue. So what have been the challenges there? Well, the challenges there are the no flights in and out of Egypt. That's the first thing. Right. Well, we all know that there's no, well, not many flights anywhere from Europe. Right. And um, most people are just drawing in and just saying, let's just see what happens. Um, we had quite a lot of bookings that, one, we've had to accept um, cancellation. Some people have said, you know, just we'll put it off until September and uh, some people have you know you know we've always offered them uh, a return of their um, the, the, the fees so some people have paid fully ready to go and they couldn't go so we've refunded them and, and so I'm thinking we're just a little business and we're refunding and I can't get any money back from EasyJet, Air in Egypt, um, British Airways they're not paying any money back at the moment. They, they all say, when we get some money in, when, i.e. when we're scheduled, uh, our scheduled flights are going, we'll start paying your money back. Well, we're giving money back now because we value the customers and we know that they want to come when they can. You know, so, you know, the idea is look after them. And, you know, the thing is, it is a global thing. But you, one thing that you, you really have to understand is that Egypt, if it's not on somebody's bucket list, it should be. You have to see the pyramids. You have to see Tutankhamun's tomb and so on and so on like that. And you have to have a trip on the Princess Donya of the Nile. Mm. Well, I suppose now, now they say confession is good for the soul, right? So I've got to come clean. Um, in 2007 which is when I, I first came into contact with Lee, I was looking for somewhere uh, to take my then fiancé for our honeymoon. 
and uh, this came across that we were introduced by a mutual friend and I took a look at it and I, was, and I literally just took one look at it and I thought that's it and and there isn't a day that goes by and it's not because you're on on the show there isn't a day goes by where Cheryl and I don't mention those five days somewhere throughout the day and it was an incredible experience and I, I think where and, and this isn't just meant to be a you know a suck up to Lee commercial um it's even more relevant today because the future of all successful businesses and I've been saying it now for 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 at least a year it's micro it's niche it's custom it's concierge and yeah. and I've just summed up what it's like to go on on the on the Donia, on Princess Donia, um, we, we got we got met by Captain Hassan when when we got off the plane at Luxor, and I, I cannot begin to tell you it was first class all the way, and um, I was fortunate enough uh, to be able to charter the entire Donia for the for the five days for just Cheryl and I, and again there wasn't there isn't a day that goes by when we talk about it and even when we were on our honeymoon believe it or not we kept saying oh we wished so and so was here and so they would love to see this and and there, there were points where we were almost guilty about having this entire um uh, boat to ourselves uh, and to 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 be waited on and it was just it was an amazing experience so if that if that's not a great commercial for anybody i don't know what is but i promise you i i mean that from from the bottom of my heart it was it was it was just an amazing experience i mean and, until you've sat at, at the uh at, at Kami, the temple at Komambu and and eaten that meal there with all those floodlights in the background yeah. I mean, I didn't know whether I was, um, you know, a film star or whether I was Indiana Jones. And depending on what part of the day the day it was, it was one or the other. Um, so it, it is it is an amazing experience. And and the thing that that's always stayed with me about it is the intimacy of it. I mean, there was the um, the six crew, you know, Captain Hassan and Chef Mohammed, and um, but they were very discreet. They were there when you wanted to be there, and they weren't there. But you knew they were there because we were on a 120-foot square, you know, 120-foot length boat. So um, I, I highly recommend it. And if you're thinking about corporate charters, whether it be a honeymoon or a private deal, or uh, it's it's perfect if you want to do a uh, a corporate retreat. You know, um, it, it's it's just fantastic. So. Um, that, that's got the commercial out the way as it were that's got my my, my testimonial for you out the way what i want to do now is um i want to talk a little bit about your experience with the tourism part of it we've gone through the crew and the building and the and the and the, the fun stuff and, and we've been through the um uh, the, the revolution and covid19 uh share with us some stories of if you like dealing with the public and being a travel agent that was like are you kidding me i i i just never thought about that you're absolutely right i built it and forgot about the fact that you need an, a whole infrastructure you need um uh, agents you need people introducing business and so on like that the first um cruises that we had were all full but they were full of guests that i wanted to experience this and we had journalists that came along and uh, and so on like that and and um you know promoted it so we, we we were doing all sorts of things like that sending out invitations to what, what you know renowned journalists that could come on and they, they brought photographers and things like that and um, and we made a video that's on. It's the same video that we um, still have on the website and YouTube. You can watch the very shortened version or the full version. And I think it was a, a, an awakening when what we realised was, and if there's any fault or mistake, it's the fact that we didn't really appreciate the power of social media. And social media, especially for a niche business like ours, is really where it's at. I mean, the, 
the recommendations and the write-ups and things that we get, you know, it's it's really heartwarming to read them, and and you know that, you know, people have had a fabulous time and can't wait to come back or have a find another reason why they can come back, and we've got to the situation now where we just keep doing things as best as we can and to keep on top of it and to keep remodeling and to we keep it fresh without losing the character right. and you know that's that's what we do we remodeled the the bar the salon but we used the original wood we didn't just throw it out and go to ikea we had the original and we remodeled and it looks fabulous so what happens is most of of, of our bookings come from people that have been on Princess Donia already. They're, they're, they're our advocates. They, they tell the story and people say, we want to come on it. We, we've got lots of embassies that, you know, where you've got a good group of staff, they said, come out, get out. You know, we've got the French embassy, the Dutch embassy, all, all in Cairo and they all say, right, we've got to get into Princess Donia. So it's word of mouth, it's recommendation. And, and I think I just wished I'd got onto that social media. Um, I'm just slightly the wrong side of, of that, but I'm catching up, right. catching up all the time. That's right. That's okay. All right, good stuff. Uh, I want to change tact a little bit. I think we've had a, a, an amazing insight uh, into Lee, what makes him tick and what makes him buzz. And, and clearly we've learned a great deal about what it takes uh, to run uh, a, a business that is... Uh, not only just a long way away, but in a com completely different culture, different language, different different everything. Uh, but I, I just want to, in, in the closing uh, section of the show, I just want to uh, ask you a few questions and and a, a quick a few quick fire and see where they go. Uh, okay. Best piece of business advice you've ever been given? If you get good people, keep hold of them. They're worth the weight in gold. Right. Hassan, Hassan. Okay. Business. Biggest misstep mistake you've ever done? I think the biggest mistake is not getting on to social media quick enough. That's that's the biggest mistake. It's it's it put us back too much, really. Um, so yeah, that is the biggest mistake. Okay. What do you think a new business owner, anybody starting out tomorrow, today, where should they spend the most of their time? What should they focus on to start off with? Well, the business, but what it is that they're going to, what's the end result? I begin with the end in mind, really. What, what do you want the end result to look like? Right. Because if you know what the end result is, I, I knew what I wanted to build and I could work back over from that. What do we need to do in order to get to the next stage and the next stage to get what it is that I want in the end? So right. that's, that's what I would say. How does Lee work through feelings when he gets the feeling of self-doubt or that little imposter syndrome, you know, the, the guy that sits on your shoulder, Lee, you don't do that, you don't do that. I, I get up early, exercise with affirmations, right? You know, I can, I will, you know, I'm happy, I'm sad, whatever, whatever, it, whatever it is I want to be, I'm happy, I'm slim, I'm fit, I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm slim, I'm filled, I'm, you know, and you know, put the positive stuff in. You can, there's lots of things that you, you can listen to a Jim Rohn tape from years ago and just change everything, just, and you think, wow. So, but yeah, generally it's exercise and, uh, and, and maybe affirmation. All right. Uh, what word or phrase do you most overuse? Ah, uh, God, word or phrase, overused. Probably it'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. All right. I'm sure it'll be all right. Does Lee want to be in charge or in control? No, I'll, I have people that are in charge. I've always thought I might like to be in control and then realise you're never really in control. Look at now. I mean, what am I in control of? Hardly anything. Right? Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with the business, the boat, or nothing. So... I'd like to be in control, but I realize it's not going to happen. Okay. 
Which living person do you most admire? Living person? Yeah. Her Majesty the Queen. And Good if, call. And if I had to put something else on there, I would say Pope Francis. And the next one, I would say the 14th Dalai Lama. Great people. Arise, Sir Lee Allen. Good answer. If only. <laughs> Uh, I'd much rather meet her in an informal setting. Yeah, I hear you. Favourite cocktail? I like a single malt on ice. All right. So you're not going to be in drinking into my gin section then, so that's good. I like that. Yeah. All the more for me. Uh, what's your least... What's the, the one business word you hate that, when it comes to business? It's not so much a word. It's these abbreviations oh you've got to have a brs how's your tcp compared to the brs and i'm going what on earth are these people talking about and of course if you don't know what the brs is then you're obviously you don't know what you're on about because you right. don't know what the tcp is compared to the brs and i think just talking something i can understand that's right. my pet and because most of them are full of bs right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, favorite hero of fiction? Uh, the Tooth Fairy. Okay. It's the only person that's ever left money under my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great one. I love that one. All right. Um, uh, which, what do you, what trait do you deplore most in others? Deplore? Yeah. Fickleness, okay. fickleness, just blowing in the wind. They fickle, just, it's a great idea. I don't know, but it's too difficult. We'll go on to something else. All right. Yeah. You've had a very colorful career, mm -hmm. but is there anything, if you could start all over again or given the opportunity that you'd like to have a go at? I don't know, attorney, politician, bricklayer, I don't know. Uh, probably a motivational speaker going across America, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why, why not? not? Come on. Everybody else is having a go. Come on down. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good stuff. So last one. If you, if this video blog could connect you with anybody, anybody in the world, king, queen, prince, potentate, villain, bricklayer, tramp, gypsy, anybody. And when they watch it, they turn to somebody or they say, I've got to get older, Lee Allen. Who's it going to be? I would like it to be someone or some people in the United States travel industry who are either looking for something special for people that they're have to go on holiday with them and are looking for something where they have confidence to say we don't even have to think about this we can send people to the princess donya and we know they're going to be looked after and we're not going to get complaints we're not going to get problems everything is just going to be super so i mean i would really like an introduction to um the, some people I think movers or shakers in the travel business that could do business with us. That would be fantastic. And like I said, it's not necessarily for me, it's for the guys on the board. Phone him, contact him now. I promise you, whoever you send out to the Donya, they will have, to say the time of their life is the biggest understatement in the world. It's an amazing, amazing experience and first class and five star if there's a six star a 10 star a 12 star and there's a first class plus 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 that's what it is absolutely everything is taken care of uh, my experience was first plus all the way from my initial inquiry even to when i got back there was the follow-up, was everything okay? Just amazing. Carl, do you know why you had 1,700 photographs when you actually came back from there? It's because I asked Captain Hassan to take your camera off you when you got <laughs> on board. 
And I said to him, I don't want Carl going back and saying, he's a nice one of Cheryl and he's a nice one of me. I want you to just keep taking photographs until they tell you the stuff. <laughs> so that's why you've got so many photographs. And they're great. And they're great. And in fact, I was looking at them literally 20 minutes before we came on. Right. Uh, Lee, what can I tell you? It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. I always enjoy talking to you. Yeah. It, and it's always a pleasure and it's a great honour to have done business with Absolutely. you. Um, if anybody wants to get hold of you, how are they going to do it? Well, the website is um, Princess Donia, D-O-N-I-A. Uh, the cell phone that you can get through direct is... It's a UK one, so it's 0044-7752-610-763. And there is a number on the website if yeah. you get to that. Yeah. And if anybody has any trouble, just give me a shout. I'll put you in touch. That's it. 30 minutes of business banter and badinage have flown, 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 flown by. Wow. I want to I thank Lee Allen for giving up uh, some of his time. Uh, he's very valuable time to talk to us today. Um, I want to thank the team at Guerrilla Media for twiddling all the knobs and doing whatever it is to work their magic to make this happen. I want to thank you for watching and for listening. And please don't forget to visit Tima's Video Vault of Wisdom at thirdeyemanagement.com where you'll find and we share all the other episodes of Tima Talk and you'll find strategies and tactics on how you can grow your business. So until the next time we meet, I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay in touch, but most of all, I want you to stay in profitable. And with that, we are out.